Welcome again to our daily devotional series, Introducing God. When we last left the story, as we're learning about God and learning about Abraham, Abraham has been asked by God to sacrifice Isaac, but just at the last moment, God steps in, stops him, and provides a ram for him to sacrifice. We pick up with the story on God's reaction, if you will, to Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac. So let's pick up in Genesis chapter 22, Genesis chapter 22, verse 15. Then the angel of Yahweh called to Abraham a second time from heaven, saying, By myself I have sworn, declares Yahweh, because you have done this thing and have not spared your son, your only one. Indeed, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have listened to my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and walked together to Beersheba. And Abraham lived at Beersheba. Now it happened after these things that it was told to Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah also has borne children to your brother Nahor, Uz his firstborn, and Buz his brother, and Kemuel the father of a Aram and Chizid, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jiplaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel was the father of Rebekah. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And his concubine, whose name was Ruma, also bore Teba, and Gaham, Tehash, and Mecca. Now, the, the names may not be as important other than Bethul and Rebekah, because Rebekah will come into the picture later with Isaac. But as I, I look at this event, there are a couple of things that I want us to see that relate to the New Testament. One, this is the moment when we realize Abraham's faith. His faith has grown to the point that he was able to do what God had asked, even though he didn't necessarily understand. The Hebrew writer says that, that Abraham believe that God could even raise him from the dead. So raise Isaac from the dead. So there's that faith that says, if God wants me to do this, God has a reason and God has a plan and God will take care of me. God will provide. And in the story, you see that God does provide the ram to replace Isaac, who Abraham was willing to sacrifice. Then God says, through Isaac, your only begotten, your only son, that I'm going to bless you through him, and I'm going to make a nation through him, a great nation, and then through his seed and through your seed through him, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So two things I want to point out from from these events and from what God says to Abram, or Abraham, excuse me. The first is the New Testament says, Paul both Paul says it and also James repeats it. Abraham believed God. And it was credited or counted to him as righteousness. Abraham's faith is such that God looks at him and says, your faith has made you righteous. Was Abraham perfect? By no means. But what we see in Abraham is a man whose faith is growing and puts his trust, his complete trust in God. And his faith, seen in his action, was considered righteousness before God. And then both then Paul might add something along this line, the righteous shall live by faith. So the challenge for us is to be like Abraham, people of faith, and have that faith which leads to action, which leads to following God and doing what God says, be counted as righteousness. And the other part of the story is, through Abraham, all the nations of the earth will be blessed through his seed. We read in Galatians chapter 3 and the first part of chapter 4 that we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of us as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's that faith in righteousness. We are either Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, man or female, but we are one in Christ and we are heirs, seeds according to the promise, the promise to Abraham. Through Abraham's family, Christ would come. And through Christ, all the nations of the earth have access to God, so are can be blessed. There's the promise to Abraham that is fulfilled in you and me when we come to God in Christ. Let's go to God in prayer. 
Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the blessings that you give us. Father, we thank you for Abraham, for his growth in faith, for his journey, and for his faith growing to the point that he was willing to do the unthinkable when that is what you ask of him. Father, help us to have a faith like Abraham that is willing to step out and do things that may seem silly, may seem wrong actually to the world, but are done because you have asked us to do them. Father, there are many things you have asked us to do in your word, which maybe the world doesn't understand. Coming to you through Christ, having our sins washed in his blood, being buried with him, singing praise to your name, loving our enemies. So many things come to my mind when I think about doing things that maybe seem opposite of what maybe the world might think. Father, help us to be willing to do what you know is right because we trust you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to join you as we spend time in God's word. I do look forward to our time together. I hope you do as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.